Hi, welcome to Ethereum Mechanics video number 44. This is Mother Nature's Gateways. This is for general audience. Hello, my name is Robert Distinti. I'm an electrical engineer with 30 years experience. Um, this gateway theory is something that's a relatively new concept. Uh, it's really a topic that belongs in videos somewhere between 7 and 10. Uh, I came up with this. It's kind of formulated as I was making the videos. Um, but better late than never. And this continues the discussion of video number 36, which begins the discussion of gateway models, and video number 41, which describes theoretical gateway models in the beginning before it goes into the pretonic gateway. In this video, I'm going to show you that nature seems to be constructed in such a fashion that allows a reasonable, intelligently and reasonable species to figure it out. I mean, this could be an argument for an intelligent creator. However, one could easily argue that there are multiple incarnations of the universe. It just happens that we exist in the one that can be figured out. Um, until we know more about the universe, such speculation at this point is of no value. But let's go look at how we basically figured out the, the, the nature. We started off with a very simple model for the Earth called the flat Earth model. We thought the Earth was flat. And that worked. That allowed us to build structures and aqueducts and start building a civilization with running water, sewers, architecture, um, and basic machinery like you know moving water, pumping water, uh, wheel, etc., etc. And this line here shows here's the flat earth model and here's three observations that fit that flat earth model. And then later on, um, after civilization advanced, we need, need roads to develop larger, more stable ships for trade. And Archimedes' principle was sufficient to allow us to develop such ships. Archimedes' principle is another gateway model. Okay, and, but then as, as ships became larger, more stable, and ocean-going, it expanded our footprint on the planet, which demonstrated that the flat Earth model was wrong. I mean, this was the three dots I shown before. And as we, our footprint expanded, we got to the point where the flat Earth model and the real model of the Earth, the curvature of the Earth, diverged. And this new spherical model of the Earth opened up alternate trade routes and new worlds. But it was interesting that the flat Earth model was a gateway that allowed us to get going. And the Archimedes principle was the gateway that allowed us to go beyond to find out that our, one of our other models was not quite sufficient. And then as ships became faster, we learned that even our committee's principle was not quite correct. There's a thing called the squat effect. As ships get faster, they actually sink down into the water. And some ship disasters occurred because ships that would normally pass this, this undersea ridge here, uh, then let's say you have a storm coming and a ship has to get into, into, into shallow waters or safe waters quickly, so they're going to come in real fast, they're going to squat down and crash into that undersea obstacle that they missed every time before. Um, and this actual technique was used by a cruise ship uh, manufacturer. They had a bridge they needed to get their cruise ship under, and the ship was taller than the underside of the bridge. So what they did is they calculated the speed they need to, to squat the ship down to fit under the bridge. It's a very interesting story. So the pattern is that nature's mechanisms seem to be construed in such a way that allows primitive beings like us to get a leg up with a simple theory or simple theoretical approximation, which allows our footprint to expand in either speed, distance, size, volume, yada, yada, yada. And with this increase in footprint, more observations are required, which allows improved theoretical models to be put forward. And I'm showing you by this divergence model here. Um, and a lot of times, a new theory required to explain the new anomalous observation may require a paradigm shift in our theories of science. For example, the Galileo example. All the elements in the night sky, except for a handful, about five elements or five items, they all fit the idea that everything in the universe goes around the Earth. All of them, except those five objects, wandering objects that did loop-de-loops through the night sky. And the Latin word for wanderer is planet. And in order to explain those tiny little five out of thousands, five items out of thousands that didn't fit the model, we had to throw out the idea that the Earth is the center of the universe and come up with a completely different model. And this is in one of the other rules of acquisition. It's, you know, the smallest anomaly may cause a paradigm shift in our understanding of the universe. And relativity is one of the most important gateways that Mother Nature has given us. 
well, at least the appearance of relativistic invariance, which means that the observed result of an experiment is not affected by the absolute motion of the experiment. Why is this important? Well, if the observed outcome of an experiment were affected by the absolute motion, then the results would change based on the time of day due to the spin of the Earth, the time of the year, the orbit about the Sun, the speed of the Sun about the galactic core. I mean, if we were to make simple observations about something like this, this little knick-knack toy or uh, Coulomb's model, if we were trying to make measurements of Coulomb's model and that changed every day, every year, every season, it's unlikely we would have been able to come up with a coherent, simple model to get things going. Um, now that's not 100% the case because you can look at things like Stonehenge and even though the stars are not in the same place on a daily, hourly, seasonal, yearly basis, they were able to come up and find the pattern of how the stars move. So it's not impossible, it probably which just so slowed us down tremendously. Okay. And like I said, it, it might have been too difficult for an early science and engineering to develop. Experiments were not repeatable. I mean how could you build a pyramid if up change on an hourly basis? And so relativity is just a gateway. There are anomalies that cannot be explained by relativity. Magnetism is one. To explain these anomalies requires a paradigm shift in the concept of relative reference frames, and that is what we call immediate or absolute. I kind of use those interchangeably. And we're going to talk about those in the next video, which is called Breaking Relativity. And time. I'm often asked about time. How does ethereal mechanics define time? And the answer is, I'm leveraging Mother Nature's gift of a gateway where we can view time as an absolute. And people say, well, what about time dilation? We'll see the next page. Okay, in ethereal, let's consider this. If I put, according to what we know, if we put a clock at the top of a mountain and a clock at the base of a mountain, the clock at the top of the mountain is going to pass, it's going to move faster than this. Now, that doesn't mean time is dilating. If that meant that time was dilating, that means the top of the mountain is passing into the future while we're down here standing still. That means the top of the mountain would disappear if you take Hollywood's view of the way time works. So it's not time that's dilating. What's dilating is the material processes that make up that clock are faster than the material processes. And so in ethereal mechanics, time is going to be an absolute reference frame that we're going to use for now. Okay, and we're going to look at not time dilation, but material process dilation is how, materi uh, how ethereal mechanics explains what relativity calls time dilation. It's the rate at which things happen. Okay, just like I can take a chemical reaction and heat it up to speed it up or add, a, or add a catalyst to speed up a chemical reaction. I didn't change time. I changed the rate at which things happen. That's a more consistent view of everything than that we're dilating time. So right now ethereal mechanics is going to go under the idea that time is another of the absolute reference frames. And we should just look at ethereal mechanics as just the next gateway. Hopefully it will allow us to expand our footprint, maybe get those faster than light starships going, that will be able to bump into the next anomalies, which will allow us to develop even better gateway models, or maybe even the final model. Okay, and perhaps we might even find an anomaly that will give us a more evolved understanding of time. Right now we're going to use Mother Nature's gateway for time with just a simple absolute reference frame. Because it works and we can get good results with it. Next video is going to be number 45 which is Breaking Relativity. Thank you. I thank you for your donations. Uh, no more voodoo physics. Thank you.